Tonight, we're going to dive deep so we can truly figure out why victory is in a simple soul. Hey, everybody out there in YouTube land, Jake of the One Man Band is back again, and welcome to another Ruby in-depth look. And you know what I like? I like semblances. I do. Special powers, each different and unique to the certain person that there is in Ruby. I mean, of the few or of the few semblances that we actually know of in the characters of Ruby, each one is just so awesome and unique and powerful mind you each one of them is equally as power as powerful as the other just in different ways but it really begs the question what exactly is a semblance what exactly is aura and where do they come from and how are they discovered why is it that each semblance is so different from each other well, I think I have cracked the case on this one, my friends. Now to all you guys that are wondering, this is kind of my follow-up video for the World of Remnant video titled Aura. That short little video where it actually talks about the aura that takes place, that is in the World of Remnant in every single person. They use it as a weapon and such. So I know some of you guys were wondering why I hadn't put out a video, and to be honest, I kind of forgot to. But I am doing it now, and I am doing it specifically for uh, those guys who asked for it, and also for everyone else who might want to see it. Alright, so before we dive into semblances, let's talk about Aura. What do we know about Aura? What is Aura? We know that Aura is a person's soul, which has basically been weaponized and given form. I mean, as Pira has said. Aura is the manifestation of our soul. It bears our burdens and shields our hearts. Now we do also know that the people of Remnant and the animals of Remnant all have an Aura, all have a soul, if you will. Now I'm not sure if that qualifies to plants as well, but basically all the fauna of Remnant, such as the humans, the faunas, and all the animals, all have an aura and all have a soul. But the Grimm do not. They do not have an aura in any way, because they lack a soul. Now that doesn't mean that they don't lack intelligence. We need to remember that having a soul and having intelligence is a completely different thing. I mean, look at, what's his face? Donald Trump? I'm pretty sure he's smart, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a soul either. Because as we know, the longer a Grimm lives, the smarter it gets. But I'll go more into Grimm when I actually get to the Grimm video. So, back to Aura. Aura is from a soul, which is specifically uh, in creatures of good nature on the world of Remnant. So, an aura is when somebody can weaponize and manifest their soul into... It's like a force field! Yes. John, yes, a force field does does make sense, and it makes the best amount of sense. It's basically a person's armor, if you will, in the Ruby universe. It kind of explains the whole fact that these warriors, they're, they're able to take hits the way they do without them wearing any form of armor or protection, because they have a form of protection already. Now, the more damage they take, their aura gets weaker, so, and the more they use their semblance, it also gets weaker. So it, it's a combination of kind of their stamina and health bar, if you will. N now, I'm not sure how it, the aura power rejuvenates, probably, you know, with common things like rest and food and water and just sustenance in that mind. You need to keep a strong body as well as a strong mind and a strong soul in order to keep up your semblance power. But that's all just my opinion. So basically now that we know what an aura is, what is a semblance? Well, as we know, a semblance is a specific power that a person has that is manifested and used through the use of aura. Now let it be known that there is a difference between one 
unlocking a person's aura, and two, discovering their semblance. Because, as we know, in Volume 1 of Ruby, Pyrrha unlocked Jean's aura, because his hadn't been unlocked yet. And I'm not sure how the whole unlocking method of a person's aura is done. It's probably done through training and, you know, finding your center or something. It's kind of just glossed over. But Pyrrha uses her own aura to unlike, unlike, uh, unlock Jean's. I couldn't say unlock there for a second. But maybe that's part of the whole process, that somebody has to use their own aura to unlock somebody else's. But then, of course, that begs the question. Who was the very first person who unlocked their own aura in order to unlock everyone else's? But I'm getting off track. So unlocking aura is different than discovering a person's semblance. Because as we know, Jean doesn't know what his semblance is yet. It even states in Volume 2. I'm sure we'll discover your semblance any day now. Pira and Jean are working on unlocking his semblance. Now the aspects of a person's soul and a person's semblance going hand in hand is actually more in depth than you may think. And I got a few examples to show for you. All right, I'm gonna go through a few characters whom we actually know what their semblance is and give you some some facts, all right? So, as we know, Good Witch, her semblance is a form of telekinesis. Now, what is telekinesis that we know? It's the ability to manipulate objects at a distance without using your physical form. Now, as we know, Good Witch is a very commanding, very strict, and very, you know, proper person. And she wants to keep order in her world and with her students. And that is why telekinesis fits so well for her. She can create order without actually using herself. She can do it at a distance. We've, we've seen her completely reconstruct buildings and destroyed streets with that form of control. So it goes hand in hand with her personality. Blake, her semblance is some form of shadow clone that she leaves behind, which takes the hit for her when she's able to evade around it and then attack said person. As we know, in her past, she stated that she always ran when trouble came, leaving her shadow clone behind to take the hint, take the hit. So, her personality helped influence her semblance. Her personality at that time was that I need to evade this damage. I need to run away from this trouble. And now she's able to use it in combat so well, but beforehand, it was a defense mechanism. Weiss's semblance is her glyphs. She's able to use her glyphs to amplify her uh, aura powers and using her weapon and dust. But her glyphs are actually her family's crest and symbol. As we know, she wants to restore the family honor. And how is she doing that? Every time she fights, every time she lands a hit, and every time she's going to be saving somebody, they're gonna see her using the Weiss family crest. So they know that they're being saved by a member of the Schnee family. Pira, her use of magnetism and her power of polarity. At a young age, we don't know much about Pira, but here's what I'm guessing. Pira, at a young age, wanted to be someone who would be the ultimate fighter, who could protect people, and who would be basically unstoppable. And so, when her semblance was unlocked and discovered, she found that she could manipulate other people's weapons and the metal around her to make her the invincible girl. Yang's semblance of being the tank and just full out blood rage. She is able to take hits and then use that damage to amplify her own hits and even deal the damage back twice fold if need be. She is the person who takes on somebody else's burdens and then is able to use that to her advantage. At a young age, Ruby lost her mother. Yang became the motherly figure to Ruby. She was taking on Ruby's grief, Ruby's sorrow, and all the responsibilities that uh, Summer Rose would have had. She took all those on and was able to get through it by amplifying her own power. And of course, Ruby. Her semblance is her speed. Her, she 
is a very simple soul. She wants to just be a huntress so that she can help people and fight for what's right. And how can she do that? By getting to the front lines fast and getting there first. Her speed comes into play. So basically, what I'm saying is that each character's personality ties in to their semblance. And when their semblance was unlocked, it was due to what their personality was and what they were feeling at the time, which once their semblance unlocked, they could then see that this is why I'm going to be the way I am. I guess the best way I can put it is that a person's semblance in Ruby is what a cutie mark is in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. At the beginning of a pony's life, they don't know what their cutie mark is going to be. It is their job to find out what it is, but it is their destiny to find out what it is and how they're going to come across it. But once they do, they find out and their cutie mark appears. I believe that in Ruby, the very same rules apply. They have to use their aura and kind of search for what their semblance is going to be. And once they truly find out what it is, it unlocks. And they're going to be able to use that power later on in life. Soul, aura, semblance. Three things all revolving around the person that they all inhabit. They're all connected and they all come from the same thing. That person's personality and drive to do what they do. And that is my opinion on how aura comes into play, what semblances are, and how semblances are formed. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I hope that this episode kind of shines some light on the whole semblance aura mystery because for a long time semblances in Ruby were my big obsession. I did I was like, what is a semblance? Why is it so important? What is all this stuff? But then with the current volume, you know, volume two, and then me just thinking about it, I came up with the, these ideas and I think they really hit home. But hey, if you have a better idea about what a semblance is and how they come across, or even what an aura is, then feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'd love to see them. I'd love to read them. And be sure to like and favor if you've enjoyed. Subscribe, of course, if you feel inclined to. I'm not going to force you. But of course, to end this episode, I'm going to need you to be a good person, tip your waitresses, keep moving forward, and as Jake of the One Man Band, I strive to entertain you in more ways than one. And I hope that I have done that tonight or today, this morning, whenever you're watching this. So I'll see you next time. Yeah, y'all!